All the answers is gonna be either MacGyver or Mr. Pete. Woohoo! My boobies really are not that big. That sounds dirty. Woohoo! Oh, Captain, my Captain. I'm keeping score because I don't trust Jason. <laughs> what the hell am I doing in this show? <laughs> wow! Welcome to our show, Internet listeners. I'm Jason Hawk, your host here on the Atomic Trivia War 9000. Let's meet our intrepid contestants. He's our all-time point leader, and by far the most popular with the ATW9K fans. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our returning champion, Omar Hernandez. Ooh, yeah. You know how popular you are, Omar? Everyone wants you. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. You could. Uh, according to my wife, she has a great radio voice, but sounds like she could, quote, knock you out. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> give it up for Rochelle Mantanata. Oh, uh, really? She said that? Yeah. That's funny. Well, thank you. I know. And, uh, sweet, dear, compassionate listeners, please help me in welcoming back to the show someone whose winky will never be the same. (laughs) After a vasectomy earlier this week, he's just half the man he used to be, Kevin Archibald. Why, thank you, sir, thank you. But, uh, as anyone with a medical degree will know, I am still potent for, you know, a good 14 or 15 more shots. So, ladies, time's running out. Kev sent me an email earlier today saying that his wiener is fair game and that I can do all the peener jokes that I want. So let's see how many we can count during the show. (laughs) You guys can help me out. Uh, But for right now, let's avoid the weenus jokes and go right to the rank and file game. Let's do some ranking peoples here. Uh, Tonight, for your amusement, I have a category that could be very difficult or very easy, depending on how you guys approach it. I have here the list of the top 20 highest grossing animated films of all time. Yes, the list is adjusted for inflation. And whoever guesses the closest to number one will get first pick from among these categories in our hot seat game. Questions from the Land Down Under by Richard Kershaw. Augustine's favorite TV shows by our buddy Augustine Chancusi of Quito, Ecuador. Danger Zone by Matt Zupka, or perhaps should I say, Danger Zone! (laughs) And Puppets by Josh Bissell. Now, there's four categories. I know you guys can count. There's only three of you. So one of the categories is going to be leftover. So we'll use that leftover category to wrap up the show at the end. But for now, we need to actually go ahead here and guess from the top 20 highest grossing animated movies of all time, which one is number one. Let's see who can get the closest on the list. I'm going to defer first to our poor, poor, (laughs) ball-aching Kevin. What do you say, sir? Well, sir, uh, boo. This could be the codeine talking, but I'm going to go all the way back to Snow White. All the way back to Snow White, a fair guess. And Ro, what do you say? Wait, highest... Okay, gosh, now I was thinking box office. No, I don't know. I was going to say Shrek 2, but I don't think that's right. I'll just stick with Shrek 2. And Omar. I'm going to go with the obvious winner. It's going to be Toy Story 3. Really? (laughs) I heard a Ro gasp just there. Yeah, I was like, damn it, why didn't I think of that? But... Let me tell you that all three of you are on the list. Really? And one of you has the number one answer. Hmm. Let's start with Ro. Yeah, I'm not number one. <laughs> Ro, yeah. you guessed Shrek 2. Uh-huh. Not a bad guess at all. Shrek 2 ranks in at number seven. Oh, okay. That's for sure. $556 million. Let's turn next to Kevin. Kevin, you guessed Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Yes, sir. You are number one. Hey, number one, number one. $853 million. And Omar, you had Toy Story 3. Now, Toy Story 1, 2, and 3 are all on this list. Toy Story 3 made the most money of all three of them. It had $408 million to rank in at number 13. I thought all the, the old Disney movies, like, did poorly. Like, really bad. No, not at all. As a matter of fact... A lot of the old Disney movies dominate the list. Uh, Remember that back then, there were fewer movies to go see, so even if it wasn't as popular, it captured a lot more of the market share. Hmm. So just running down the list, of course we already know Snow White, number one. Number two, 101 Dalmatians. Okay. Number three, The Lion King. Number four, Fantasia. Five is The Jungle Book. Six, Sleeping Beauty. Seven, we already said, is Shrek 2. From there, it's Pinocchio, Bambi, and Finding Nemo rounding at the top ten. And And then from there, of course, uh, I mean, it's just, it really is Disney-dominated for the entire Mm. time. You've got Lady and the Tramp, Aladdin, Toy Story 3, Toy Story 2, Shrek, Shrek the Third, Beauty and the Beast, Monsters, Inc., Toy Story, the first one, The Incredibles, Up, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Cars, A Bug's Life, and at number 25, 
I can't believe this movie is even on here, but Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was also thinking of, like, box office, but you didn't say box office. And when you think about highest grossing, you're talking about um, theater sales, DVD, VHS sales, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Well, <laughs> see, this is why... Oh. This, it's, it's probably... this, But the reason why they probably sell is because Disney does a stupid bullshit thing called The Vault, where they basically yes. release their titles, and then, oh, it's only for a limited time, we're putting it back in The Vault, and then when they re-release it, it's like, oh, so special! And they, ugh, you know, fuck you, Disney, for doing that. I love you, <laughs> but fuck you. Don't do that. Snow White was, like, the first film I saw in the cinema back when back when they would always play O Canada, just, be like, before the before the show. That's going back a ways. What, what? They brainwashed you with patriotism? It's what used to, like, before, like, my friends who remember seeing Star Wars and Superman and those kind of films in the cinema, they used to show uh, O Canada and used to stand up before the show. It was a thing. Canada is very proud of itself. You guys do have restrictions on your media where you have to play a certain amount of Canadian content on both your television and radio broadcasts, right? Yeah, that's just having to do with being next to such a huge cultural juggernaut and not wanting to be just completely overwhelmed by the tidal wave, but it's kind of hard to keep up in the internet age. But it worked well in the radio stuff. Uh, I grew up right across the border from Canada inside New York, and uh, I I know a lot of Canadian bands that nobody in Ohio seems to know now. (laughs) You're a lucky man, then. Like, hey, guys, Barstool Profits, right? Right, guys? What? Nice. No, Jason. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Before we jump into the hot seat, Kevin picked number one. You get first pick, Kevin. What do you say that you want for the hot seat? Ah, okay. Do you want to read them out quickly? We've got questions from the land down under, Augustine's favorite TV shows, Danger Zone and Puppets. Please don't take mine. That's right. Because I know Matt... You already read them out, didn't you? No, no. Let me take it. (laughs) Uh, Let's go with... uh, You know what? I'm feeling risky tonight. I'm going to go with Danger Zone. No! Yeah! Matt wrote that for me! Did he? You know what? You know what, Ro? Why don't you take that, my dear? If he wrote that for you, by all means, you take that. I'm probably failing. Have some balls, Kevin. Come on. I do, but they're disconnected from my body now. His vas deferens have been... Pinched off. Thanks. That's correct. Okay. There are no vast deference. I'll tell you what, my boy Josh Bissell, who's a Toronto boy, if I'm not mistaken, was at the last meetup, did puppets. I'll take his. Okay, so puppets for Kevin. Ro thinks that she can lay claim to Archer. Is this about Archer? Yeah, it's about Archer. He wrote that for Oh, me. girlfriend, I was watching that show <laughs> years before you. I know you were, but I've been watching it recently. And Omar, of the remaining two, you would like to pick? I will take... Agustin Chancusi's, uh, Agustin's favorite TV shows. Very, very good. We will tackle those hot seat questions when we come back from this commercial break. Hey there, ATW9K fans. This is Zach from the Artless Podcast, and I have a trivia question for you. Which classic board game features the characters Grandma Nut and Queen Frostine? That, of course, is Candyland. Well, speaking of board games... I wanted to talk to all of you about a board game that I have created, and I actually need your help. I made a board game called Legends of Adventure, and it's a cooperative fantasy game where all the players are working together to complete ten adventures along the way, defeating monsters with various cards. And what I need from you, ATW9K fans, I need some help getting the funds to get it produced. I'm using Kickstarter.com, and if you're not familiar, it's a great site to raise funds for creative endeavors. So I'd really appreciate it if you could take a look at either our site, which is legendsofadventuregame.com, and learn more about the game itself, or go right to kickstarter.com and search for Legends of Adventure and see if you can help out. If you decide you'd like to back a project like this, your support will not go unrewarded. We have incentives including t-shirts, signed art by the artist, signed copies of the game, and heck, you can even be part of the game as one of the characters. So, please... Take a chance on Legends of Adventure and see where it will take you. LegendsofAdventureGame.com uh, You know, Zach is not doing too badly on there so far. As of this recording, he's already got $1,700. He needs quite a bit more, though, in order to make his board game. We've checked it out. It looks really cool. And I think a certain someone, some boyfriend, yes. has already pledged <laughs> yeah, some, some cash. Jump. I'm checking it out here. Some Jeremy dude. I, I convinced him. <laughs> you, you used your wiles. Yeah, I used my feminine wiles. <laughs> it's not that really hard. It's like, hey, look at this Kickstarter, Jeremy. I see a few people who have joined Kickstarter just to support this project, which is awesome. But we wish Zach all the best. Zach is our official sponsor for the next few weeks as the Kickstarter is going on. Time is not unlimited, though. 
The money has to be in here sometime inside the next 33 June days, 6th. I believe, according to this page. June 6th. Um, so hurry up. Act now. You can get lots of stuff. Uh, signed art, t-shirts, all kinds of cool stuff. Of course, your copy of the game. Don't hesitate. Look at legendsofadventuregame.com. There's a link to the Kickstarter page right there. And uh, and good luck to Zach. But moving on, we do have some hot seat categories to jump into. And I cannot wait to tackle this Danger Zone category. <laughs> yes. So I think we're going to turn first to Ro. Ro, you, you like this show? Oh. This Archer thing? What is, uh, what's Archer? It's a drama. It's a real-life drama. <laughs> yes. Our heartfelt ju- uh, yeah, drama based about on, a cancer survivor. Yeah, on true events. <laughs> you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. really, it speaks to so many people on so many levels, and it's, it's, it's groundbreaking and award-winning, really. It really is. But uh, I think these questions might give some non-Archer viewers some insight into what kind of a show it is. So let's get started here. Number one. Number one's actually the tough one of the bunch, Ro. Oh, Let's see if you can get this. Archer works for the super spy agency ISIS. What does ISIS stand for? Gosh, darn it. I knew that when you said ISIS. I was like, oh, I don't know if I have to tell it. International Spy Interrogating Society. <laughs> a valiant, valiant effort. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just this once, would you like to take a second swing at it? Okay. International. And when I say just this once, I mean, we, we pretty much give you Favorism. this opportunity every time. Because you're a girl. Whoops. Really? You're, you're going to use that? Wow. I don't want to give an answer then. I refuse. It's International Secret Intelligence Service. Ah. So close. Uh, by so close, he means that you got one of the four words right. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. This one's a bit easier. I think that you'll have this one right away. What is Archer's code name, which was an homage to his mother's Afghan hound? <laughs> oh, shit. Come on, bro. Code name? His code name. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin should have took this one. I don't remember that one. You want to use your lifeline to reach out yes. to Omar? Lifeline, anybody. Omar, what is it? No, I remember uh, her talking about the dog in the picture yeah. with, that she was, like, yeah. naked, like Yoko Ono and, and Lennon. But I it's can't remember. Duchess. Duchess. Duchess, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm doing great on this one. Over two. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, let's happy. see if we can make it over three. Yes, let's go over three. I know that this is one of your more favored characters. Pam. Cheryl oh. has changed her name a bit. <laughs> name two of the three other names she's gone by. Carol and. Oh, God. God damn it. Carol. She's a tunt. <laughs> <laughs> uh. God, I only know it's Carol. All I know is Carol, and uh, that's it. I don't know any other one. about Karina? Karina. And Crystal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a diversity. See, hire. I thought you were talking... My, my favorite character is Pam, because she's the best. I don't care what anyone says. If you've seen all three seasons, Pam's the best character. Holy shit, Snacks. <laughs> There's actually cosplays yeah. of Pam, which is great. Oh, my goodness. The funny thing about Pam is if you've seen uh, Adam Reed's other series, The Frisky Dingo, the girl who does Pam does, like, the sexy sex bomb woman. So it's mm-hmm. like, my pee-pee's so confused, this woman is hot. Yeah, like this girl, she actually has a dolphin puppet to cosplay with it. Wow. Number four, you're guaranteed to okay. get. And I, I think you'll probably be shouting the you're answer. You're going to lie. I, I, just, I just feel like you're, nope. you're lying. To you. You'll be shouting the answer, okay. I guarantee it. Cheryl also has a pet ocelot <laughs> that Archer is obsessed with. What is the ocelot saying? He's got dumped in ears! Babu! Babu! Quick trivia. That's actually an homage to that one artist I told you about, Jason. I forgot his name. Do you remember that guy's name? Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali. Yes, Salvador Dali had a pet ocelot who named him Babu. And didn't we decide that they actually don't have tufted ears? Yeah, they don't. (laughs) Number five. As we learn in the episode Pipeline Fever. What did Lana do before joining ISIS? She was part of, um, she was an activist, uh, a hippie, earth-loving activist person. Animal act- rights activist. It was animal rights? I thought it was, yeah. Yeah. yeah same, same thing. Mm-hmm. And she had an afro to wear that guy <laughs> in her afro. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> so you get two out of five hey. for a show that you love. Oopsies. <laughs> oh, no. That's, that's more impotent than Kevin. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Attention see, on deck. We have a all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Omar is any less flaccid. Oopsies. 
Okay. Omar, you chose Augustine Chancuzzi's favorite TV shows. Augustine is a frequent submitter to the show. Uh, we love him. Saludos, Aquito, y a toda la gente de para allá. <laughs> Uh, comrade put the bomb on the what? What did you say? <laughs> Something like that. I I don't understand. Ohio, was it? Did you live? Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's not funny. We just did have a terror plot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Number one, in the TV series The Wonder Years, Kevin Arnold's main love interest is Winnie Cooper. What is Winnie short for? Uh, Winnipeg? We know that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I like Winnipeg. Winnipeg was good. That's a city. See, I thought you were going to come up with the poo, but that's, that's too not the easy, answer. dude. That's too easy. No, Winnie actually stands for Gwendolyn. Mm. Number two, the TV series Seventh Heaven follows the story of a Protestant minister's family living in Glen Oak, California. What is the last name of that family? Augustine. You had the worst taste <laughs> in series. This is his favorite show. This Sorry, Augustine. All the shows that came to Ecuador. <laughs> I, I never watched it. You know why the show sucks? Because of Jessica Biel. That's what brought Jessica Biel out into the... Blah, blah, and she whatever. is hot. Yes, no, she she's is. Not. Yes, she That's is. the only redeeming characteristic of that show. Well, she really sucks as an actress. Uh, the, the dad, here's just a little bit of trivia. The dad from that show, who is the, the father of the Camden family, by the way, was in Star Trek 1, the motion picture. Was he? He was. I see. Uh, number three, the first season of the TV series Prison Break takes place inside the fictional Fox River State Penitentiary in what real U.S. state? Good God, your taste sucks, dude. Um, <laughs> but we still thank you for submitting these yes, questions. Yes, 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 thank you for that. are awesome, and we never, ever abuse them. I like um, the first season of this show. It, it went I'm going to say the first New York. Oh, sorry, it's Illinois. Okay. There's a show that was filmed in Illinois. Oh, it was set in Illinois. Oh. Chicago, Illinois, like a shiny toy. <laughs> Number four, the main antagonist of the TV series Clarissa Explains It All is Clarissa's little brother. What's his name? Wow. <laughs> Me cago en la puta. That's all. <laughs> oh, wow. I know enough Spanish to get that. <laughs> Who watched that piece of crap? Honestly. I did. Yeah, I did. That 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 says a lot about you, Jason. A lot about yeah. you. <laughs> Come on, that's when Melissa Joan Hart was still really, really cute. Dude, she looked like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so you do not know that her brother's name would have been Ferguson? No. Ferguson. Did you know that, Jason? Uh, I did, yes. Yeah, well, you, you're, you're less of a man for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's man. coming from Kevin, dude. That's I know. for me. I yes. know. It's, I think that means that my entire wiener has to be removed. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Number five, in the teen sitcom Drake and Josh, their father, Walter Nichols, works at a local TV station. What is his job? Cameraman. No, a janitor. <laughs> Just <making it> up. <laughs> He's a meteorologist. <laughs> oh, okay. In the words of whoever it wasn't half-baked, fuck you... Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Kevin, you're cool. I'm out of here. If you want to be verbally berated by Omar, send your questions to ATW9K at simplysyndicated.com. Send them often. Send them today. And if you want to help us out with a future com um, specially themed show, we need some questions about robots. All about robots. You can send one, two, twenty. I don't care how many you send. We just need some robots questions. And like I said in the last show, it can be anything between like Johnny Five and Ultron. You know how much we love our science. Did you say fiction. Ultron or Voltron? Ultron. Don't, you don't I know, know what who that, that is. is. But if I could just plug something quickly, Omar's just started a petition to get HBO into Ecuador to help poor Augustine watch some quality <laughs> television. <laughs> Goddamn, uh, sure. I mean, that brings us up to Kevin. Hello, Kevin. I'm hoping this one goes a little bit better. Okay, who knows? Josh Purcell and his puppet category. We'll see. Number one. What rust-colored alien lived in the Tanner's Kitchen, where he gorged his eight stomachs and fought to stop the U.S. nuclear armament program? Do you want his Earth designation or his Melmachian name? <laughs> I will give you double points for both of them. Uh, here he was known as Alien Lifeform, or ALF, but uh, on Melmac he was known as Gordon Shumway. Good job. Yes. I spent a lot of time with ALF as a child. There That's you go. That's a Canadian love and show. <laughs> I thought you were saying that ALF looked Canadian. No. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, 
Wet Muppet was famously voiced by both Howie Mandel and Dave Coulier, and was the only member of the Electric Mayhem to transition into the main cast. Wow. That's a good uh, one. Okay, Howie Mandel, with the really high squeaky, like, Bobby generic voice. If he was voiced by Dave Coulier, I, I kind of wonder if um, Alanis Morissette was angry at him, too. Dave Coulier. I was thinking Dave Coulion from uh, Blum and Usual Suspects, but that ain't it. Uh, man, both those guys had, like, really high voices. Uh, he was the only member of the Electric Mayhem to transition into the main cast. I'm pretty sure that, I know who it is. That's the part that really narrows it down. Well, uh, who we got in the... Okay, Electric Mayhem was, like, Dr. Teeth and Animal and the piano and the saxophone. I'm going to go with Animal. Yes. Animal is correct. Yeah. I was going to give you a clue of thinking Muppet Babies, but you uh, you jumped that. Good ah, job. okay. Right, there you go. Kevin, have you seen Team America World Police? Yes, <laughs> I have. But it was a long time ago. Then you're going to have a good shot at number three. What famous actor in Team America World Police is the poster boy for FAG, that's the Film Actors Guild, before I get hate mail, <laughs> and is slaughtered by Kim Jong-il's machine gun? Uh, you only needed to say is actor. It, uh, is it Matt Damon? Matt Damon. It's actually Alec Baldwin. Oh. <laughs> I still have yet to really? watch that movie. Yeah, it's a classic. Number four. I know that you love the film Labyrinth. Uh. Hmm. In that movie, what old English sheepdog is the valiant steed of Sir Didymus? And as a play on words, since in the live-action portion of the film, his name is Merlin. And in English lore, this is also Merlin's last name. Oh, my giddy aunt. There's no way. There's no way. I think I was too busy looking at Jennifer Connelly at the time. Uh, perv? Wait, wait. When this came out, it was very appropriate. She was slightly older than me. She could, you know, be my babysitter. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. No, no, Merlin's last name. But uh, I like how the question has a couple ways to get to the answer, but I, I can't get at either of them. What old English sheepdog is the valiant steed of Sir Didymus, or what's Merlin's last name in English lore? Does anyone no. have this one? Mm-mm. Ambrosius. Mm. Uh, okay. All right. It's a hard one. It's worthy of number four. It is. Good question. M- moving Fair. on to number five. What 400-year-old Sesame Street character is the only regular cast member who took two actors to puppet? 400-year-old? And I'm going to do a quick fact check on that. Where are we getting the 400 from? <laughs> There's only one that can be 400 uh, years old. Uh, I can think of a couple. Yeah? Uh, well, yeah, the Count would be like, he could be 400 years old. Or the Two-Headed Monster, maybe, because there's two guys in there. Snuffy would definitely be two, but I can't imagine him being 400 years old. I'm going to go with Snuffleupagus. Snuffleupagus is the correct hey. answer. Hey. I'm searching to try to find his age, though. Yeah, but he wouldn't take two people to puppet. Ah. Snuffy is the answer, but I'm I'm pretty sure that about 70 episodes ago we might have had a question about him being like 4 million years old. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> don't know that one. It's not on his wiki. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Snuffy has a wiki? He I sure wouldn't. does. Okay. Duh, and or hello. That brings it to a close. <laughs> <laughs> and based on the number of points here, uh, Kevin, you got four. Hey. But only because you got double points for Alf and Gordon Shumway. Woohoo! I'll take so it. So you you win by a cheat. No, he doesn't <laughs> cheat. He has none, Jason. He has none. <laughs> oh! I am not gosh. making fun of Kevin. Look, look because... my friend. They, they they may have taken the cartridge out, but there's still a few rounds in the chamber. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Does it hurt, Kev? Uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say hurt. It certainly is uh, is tender and achy, like a, a badly bruised area of one's body that you don't want anyone to touch for a little while. Uh, I don't have a way to segue into our final category. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is just really uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, Jason, how can you not segue? Come on, look at the title. Oh, for, okay, you're right. Uh, we can actually segue quite easily. Into questions from the land down under. <laughs> <laughs> Submitted to us by Richard Kershaw of Australia. You might know him as Gojira on our forum at simplysubdicated.com. These are all going to be about Australia, and you guys can just answer as the answers come to you. No need to take turns or be polite or anything like that. But number one, let's see how quickly you can get these. Australian actors Anna Torv and John Noble currently star in what U.S. science fiction show that probably will be canceled pretty damn soon? It has to be something on Fox or sci-fi. No, he's wrong, because Fringe has just been renewed for a fifth season, oh. so Fringe fans rejoice. Oh, has it? I heard that it was definitely going to be killed off. It is, 
But after one more season that has been promised, it seems that uh-huh. Fox has had a change of heart since the good old days of Firefly, and they're going to see this through the end despite not making any money. <laughs> oh, Fox. Cancel Firefly. Keep Fringe on the air. What is wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. Actually, Fringe is uh, pretty solid now. Number two. I'm behind Fringe. Listen, Jason, I can hear it. I can hear it in your voice, but it's good. <laughs> of the following list of well-known Australian actors, which is the only one actually born in Australia? Mel Gibson, Hugh Jackman, Russell Crowe, or Nicole Kidman? Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman is the answer. He was born in Sydney. Uh, Mel Gibson was born in New York, Nicole Kidman was born in Hawaii, and Rusty is from New Zealand. I was not aware of that. There you are. Uh, number three, Danish architect Jorn Utsun designed what iconic Australian landmark? The Opera House. Sydney Opera House. Jorn Utsun. Sydney Opera House. Number four. In the classic Australian movie, Young Einstein, Albert Einstein is the son of an apple farmer from what famous island? I don't know. <laughs> do, 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 Australia? That's a continent. <laughs> <laughs> nice gambit. It's kind of like, an, like an island, like a really big one. We need the island of Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> And you count on me for for wondering if I Costa Rica is an island. <laughs> Number five, what red hot guitarist who also had roles in Back to the Future two and three was born in Melbourne, Australia, before moving to the U.S. at age five? Flea. Do you know Maro? Flea is the right answer from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and he played Needles in the Back to the Chicken? Future franchise. Oh, did he? I was not aware of that. <laughs> that draws it to a close for the evening. Thank you all for joining me here tonight. just wanted to keep this one a little bit quicker because I think uh, I think we're going to record a little bit of a bonus episode to put away for later. Uh, Jason, Woo-hoo. can I have a special request for the parting song that you can edit in? You sure can. Uh, a certain song <laughs> by, by a famous band. I think it's called Stone Temple Pilots. <laughs> you, you know the, the man I used to be? Yes, you know the song. Ah... Uh. I think that that would be appropriate if we can get the licensing fees. We should start a Kickstarter. Just for licensing fees <laughs> uh, for that song? We only need song. about 20 grand. Do you need it for like three seconds? I think you can use like a small sample of it. Omar, uh, you, you should sing it for us. In Spanish. No, actually, you should sing it. You should sing it because it's the man I used to be. <laughs> so you have to sing it. Well, I think that's a good place to cut it off. We'll Later. see you guys next week. All right, cut cheers, guys. I said cut it off. Oh, <laughs> damn you. <laughs> <laughs>